Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good morning, everyone. Uh, shall we make some neuromuscular jokes today before we fresh up? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so today we'll be enriched with uh, so many neuromuscular topics by prominent experts in neuromuscular diseases. The first talk would be done by Dr. Ali Shehri, who's doing it virtually. He's a friend of mine, a good friend of us. He's the director of neuromuscular and integrated practice unit in King Faisal Hospital. Uh, he is also president of Saudi Arabia neuromuscular chapter. He's consultant uh, neurologist in King Faisal uh, Hospital. Uh, Dr. Ali will be presenting today about updates in myopathy. The floor is yours. So we have- Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee uh, for inviting me to be part of this great meeting. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Suhail al rotan and Dr. Abu Bakr Madani for um, um, their invitation. Um, today I will be talking about um, myopathy um, review. It will be um, very difficult to cover everything related to myopathy. However, I will, um, um, you know, uh, try to um, show you how to approach, you know, a patient with suspected muscle disease uh, in the next uh, 20 to 25 minutes. Now, uh, I'll start with my disclosure. Um, I'm not going to mention anything related to medication today, but uh, here is my um, disclosures. My objective from the um, uh, lectures today is to highlight and um, uh, stress on the you know, signs and symptoms of muscle disease that might help you to establish a diagnosis. Uh, to be able to generate a good differential diagnosis based on, um, on the pattern of the muscle um, uh, weakness. And then use and understand the lab test that would help you to reach a very specific um, diagnosis. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mazen Dimashqi and Rick Perrin from Kansas University has published a very great uh, you know, paper uh, that I would encourage everyone to, um, to read it. The title is Pattern Recognition of um, uh, Muscle Disease or Myopathy. And there is another one for Pattern Recognition of uh, Neuropathy. These two, people, uh, these two papers, um, I would encourage every um, uh, one who's uh, uh, concerning or um, going to see a patient with or deal with a patient with a neuromuscular condition um, to read those um, um, very interesting papers. Now, it, it's sometimes difficult to distinguish, you know, between myopathic and non-myopathic diseases. Um, it's not as simple as um, uh, this table. However, there are some symptoms, physical exam, and some lab results that might help you. In general, you know, muscle disease um, definitely it can be acute or chronic um, uh, and it's usually progressive okay however we have some exception that we will see during the presentation and um, if it is immune usually has some systemic um, uh, manifestation um, uh, in, in physical exam weakness is the hallmark of muscle disease uh, you might see atrophy especially in advanced cases or untreated cases uh, which is not typical usually in non-myopathic condition, except in, in, in uh, motor neuron disease and some peripheral uh, neuropathy. Lab results, uh, there is no specific, you know, uh, lab result that will tell you this is a muscle disease. However, CK and aldolase are the two important, you know, uh, components that in most of the time can be elevated in, in muscle disease. However, they are non-specific, so uh, it can be elevated in other conditions. I would stress on the uh, importance of the uh, needle EMG, nerve conduction study and EMG, which is an extension of our physical exam to be able to um, localize, uh, which is, um, uh, takes us to, to the most important thing when you are faced with a neuro patient. Um, that has nothing to do with the muscle disease only. That's any patient with a neurological condition. When you suspect neurological condition, make sure that first you try to localize. Is it upper motor neuron or lower motor neuron? If it is lower motor neuron, are we talking about anterior horn cell? Is it the root? Is it the nerve? Which one of the nerve? Is it sensory, motor, autonomic, neuromuscular junction, or is it a muscle? 
Um, by doing this, you know, uh, in neurology, we don't have a lot of investigations that uh, we don't have the luxury of, uh, you know, the rheumatologist or the um, endocrinologist where you have elevated TSH, low T3 and T4, that's hypothyroidism. We have very few uh, investigation um, that can help us. Uh, unfortunately, most of them are non-specific. And we have, you know, the nerve conduction study and EMG, and sometimes, you know, the, the pathology can help. So um, um, these are the limited investigations. So using the localization is very important to limit um, your, your differential diagnosis and to be able to um, order the right test to get, you know, the right diagnosis. I remember a lot of patients who are referred to us uh, with query myopathy because of progressive weakness, and they tend to have, you know, uh, cervical myelopathy. And simple test or simple bedside sign, which is upgoing toes that was overlooked, um, can help you to do that. That's just an example, okay? When you localize the lesion, you will try to find out what's the underlying etiology. Are we dealing with acquired or inherited? Is it um, metabolic? Is it toxins? Is it um, uh, genetic? Whatever. So you try to uncover, you know, the underlying um, cause. Then last but not least, is how do you manage it? Do you have a specific treatment like an immune myopathy where you go give you know immune uh, uh, suppressant, or you only manage them you know uh, conservatively you know like you know inducing muscular dystrophy or other you know elongated muscular uh, dystrophy, um, and and that's why you know um, in 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 um, when we talk about myopathy especially for us as a neuromuscular specialist. We're not talking localization is not only muscle disease. No, it's more complicated than that. You have extracellular, you have intracellular, and the long list of diseases that can cause, you know, different kind of, of myopathy. Um, intracellularly, it can be, you know, in the nucleus, it can be in the cytoplasm, it can be in sarcomere. So, um, you try with those, you know, pattern and with the help of the genetics now to be able to reach very specific diagnosis. Now we are entering an era where gene therapy is coming, you know, in the pipeline, um, there are a lot of, you know, gene therapy to be uh, explored. And uh, I'm sure in the next five, 10 years, um, uh, you know, our way of looking and managing, you know, a lot of um, inherited myopathy uh, will be changed. Now, um, uh, we talked about, you know, the approach initially. So we ask ourselves those three questions. Where is the lesion? What is it? And how can we manage it? The next one, which is what I call a three, six, 10 approach. So the six questions that you need to ask yourself, does the patient have negative or positive symptoms and signs? And when we say positive, it's something that patient doesn't have before. And he starts complaining of, you know, an additional thing like pain, for example, cramps, contractures, you know, um, uh, some stiffness, um, uh, hypertrophy. These are positive things or negative thing, which is, you know, he lost something that he used to have it, like, you know, fatigue, atrophy and, and weakness. And knowing that can help you to um, navigate through the, uh, you know, long list of muscle um, uh, diseases. Now, the second question, very important question, is the temporal course about the weakness, pain, or stiffness, or whatever. Um, acute rarely will be, you know, inherited, okay? Except in some of the, you know, periodic paralysis or some of the rhabdo, you know, um, um, uh, genetic-related, uh, you know, rhabdomyolysis. Uh, it's almost always, you know, uh, related to acquired thing. However, chronic, it can be anything, okay? Now, is it constant or episodic, something that comes and goes, like periodic paralysis, or no, it's, it's a fixed, you know, uh, weakness? Is it monophasic, one time, or it's, you know, um, comes and goes? That's, that's an important question. Age of onset, okay? If you have an elderly with weakness, it's completely different than infant with weakness or, you know, child with weakness. So the, the temporal course is, is very important here. Lifelong weakness is almost always, you know, um, uh, inherited. Um, and, and again, you know, progressive and non-progressive, uh, we'll come to um, those patterns in a few minutes. Now, um, distribution of the weakness. So after, you know, looking to the temporal, you know, course, the distribution of the weakness 
I would say it's the key to be able to limit your differential diagnosis in, in, in muscle disease. And the most common one, if, I, if you, um, you know, ask me, uh, how do you know myopathy present? I would say almost always is a proximal upper and lower limb weakness, okay? Because those are the big muscles, okay? However, we have distal arms and legs, we have proximal arms, you know, for example, and distal legs. We have isolated neck. We have isolated cranial, which affect, you know, only either the ocular um, uh, or extraocular movement, uh, pharyngeal, or maybe, you know, facial muscle. Um, and, and they might have atrophy or hypertrophy. The next question is, if there is any trigger, okay? If you have someone who is always after exercise get weakness or stiffness or you know red urine, that's easy. That's 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 rabdo. You get someone who is um, always after heavy you know carbohydrate meals, for example, especially from Asian you know um, 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 uh, uh, race. That will direct you towards certain um, uh, differential diagnosis like you know the periodic um, uh, paralysis. Uh, important to know is it immediately after exercise? Is it after just brief exercise or after prolonged exercise? That would help us in some of the uh, chernobathy. Um, is it after exercise followed by the rest? Is it after carbohydrate meal, as I said? Um, there is any history of drug or toxins that was used? Um, is it after temperature, you know, uh, elevated temperature? Uh, that will help us to um, uh, to explore or to find out if there is, for example, neuroleptic malignant uh, syndrome. Next question, and uh, or, or this is just a small list of medication that can cause muscle disease. The list is much longer than this, but you're not here to remember those lists. The most important thing, remember cholesterol lowering agent. That's, you know, very well known that would cause either myalgia and, you know, rabdo or uh, it can cause, um, um, you know, um, immune myopathy, okay? Uh, a steroid is a well-known, and a lot of our patients are on steroid for a reason or other nowadays, you know, the COVID with the ICU admission. Um, uh, you know, chloroquine, we use it a lot. Colchicine, okay? These are those who we are using, and we have, you know, um, uh, seen a lot of uh, patients with, with uh, side effects related to those um, uh, medication. The next question, of course, family history, that's very important, okay? And when you talk about family history, try to draw the pedigree and find out, are we dealing with X-linked, autosomal recessive, dominant, or is it maternal uh, transmission like in mitochondrial um, diseases? In our area, most always you'll find either autosomal recessive disease, maternal transmission, or X-linked. Autosomal dominant um, much or is much, much less um, uh, common than in the, in the West, at least from, from um, my previous experience here. Look and please be good internist, okay? Look to your patient. Look for systemic symptoms and signs that would help you to explore exactly um, uh, the underlying etiology. If you find rash, that's dermatotil broken otherwise. If you have someone with baldness, okay? You know, this is myotonic dystrophy. If you have recurrent rhabdo, okay? We are dealing with something that, you know, or, or what I mean, dark urine that, that indicate, you know, there's a rhabdo. Um, look for dysmorphic feature like an Anderson Tawil, for example. Cardiac involvement, either muscle or mechanical contractility problem or you know, electrical problem, arrhythmia, that would help a lot. Pulmonary, if you have someone with weakness and involvement of his respiratory function and diaphragm, it limits significantly your differential diagnosis, okay? And um, uh, so on and so forth. This is just an example. So if you examine your patient, you see those, you know, guttural nodules and those rashes, and um, it's not clear here, you know, just like the uh, mechanic hands. So you think about connective tissue disease and dermatomyositis. Same thing than uh, the uh, teletrope rash around, you know, the, uh, the eyes that can, that can help. Now, that's the core of our talk today. It's the pattern. So let's focus on those patterns and see if we can reach very specific or limit our differential diagnosis. Pattern number one, the classical one limb girdle weakness, upper 
proximal upper and proximal lower. That's a long list, including immune as well as you know limb girdle muscular dystrophy. So um, that's not very helpful because most of the condition cause you know causes um, you know uh, proximal weakness. However, having said that, make sure please it's not adult onset SMA or spinal muscular atrophy, which is present typical. You know there is no sensory involvement and it's a proximal upper and lower limb, okay? And it's usually missed or um, uh, 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 called, you know, myopathy while it's, it's spinal muscular atrophy. And needle EMG in these cases will help you a lot. Same thing with myasthenia. It's a proximal weakness, right? But you will have other bulbar and, and you know, ocular uh, symptoms. But again, nerve conduction study um, and repetitive stimulation will help you to reach the diagnosis. Usually these patients, they have the classical Gower sign, okay, where they try to uh, get up from, um, you know, uh, sitting position by climbing themselves, okay? Gower sign is an indication of proximal weakness. It has nothing, it's not specific to Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Yes, it was described with Duchenne initially, but it can be with SMA, it can be with other immune myopathy or any myopathy that cause significant proximal weakness. Pattern number two. If you have distal weakness, there are a long list, okay? However, in our area here, I want you to remember, you know, dysphilinopathy or um, Lengued muscular dystrophy type 2B or Mayoshi. That's very common. I think it's the most common Lengued muscular dystrophy in our area, as well as GNA myopathy, which is Nonaka. These are two autosomal recessive. We see a lot of cases with these two conditions. Now, if you have respiratory involvement with a distal weakness, think about myotonic dystrophy or myofibular myopathy. Um, if you have, um, um, uh, you know, if the nerve connection study is suggestive of something else, don't forget, you know, distal motor neuropathy. That's also not um, uh, rare in our, in our region. Uh, this is classical distal weakness and atrophy, as you can see here. So a uh, bedside exam can help you to, uh, to identify that. Let's move gear here to a third pattern. If I have proximal arm, but distal leg weakness, that's what we call it scapulopronean. If you have facial involvement, that's FSH, facial scapulomuscular dystrophy. Um, if you don't have that, think about other disease like scapulopronial myopathy, Emery Dreyfus, Pompeii, and other diseases. But the most common or the second most common adult muscular dystrophy is facial scapular muscular um, dystrophy. Uh, you will see asymmetrical winging of the scapula, and if you see, examine the patient from the front, you will see the fold, you know, um, uh, around, you know, the pectoralis uh, muscle. But uh, number four, if I have distal arm but proximal leg, so that's a very unique, okay, especially if you have patient older than 45 or 50. So that's a disease of elderly. It's inclusion body myositis. Very classical, distal arm, mainly the flexors more than the extensors, and usually is asymmetrical, okay? If you see that pattern, that's, you know, inclusion body myositis. However, remember, inclusion body myositis or sporadic inclusion body myopathy is not usually present, you know, be, before age of 50. If you have someone in, in their 30s um, uh, or 20s with that pattern, think about something else, okay? I saw multiple cases that was mislabeled as inclusion body myopathy or sporadic inclusion my, myopathy, um, while I never saw, I remember um, Dr. Um, Alan Pestran from Washu said, if you have, you know, someone with less than 45 with this pattern, think about something else. Uh, that's a very, very classical one, asymmetrical. You see the flexors here, they cannot, you know, um, uh, make the fist. And, you know, the quadriceps is usually significantly involved. That's in contrast to the inherited one, HIPM, or what we call it GNA myopathy, where the quadriceps is usually uh, spared. Pattern number five, eye pull pattern. If you have someone with ptosis and ophthalmoplegia, common is common, okay? Um, sorry. Doses without ophthalmoplegia, think about myotonic dystrophy, congenital myopathy. If you have frozen eyes as well as doses in elderly, that's oculopharyngeal muscular dystrophy, mitochondrionopathy, some of the congenital myopathy. Please, in both patterns, do not forget the more common, which is myasthenia tract. 
because it's a treatable. If you miss someone with congenital myopathy, so what, okay? Uh, but do not miss treatable um, uh, condition. This is an, uh, one of my patient, um, uh, permission was taken from the patient to show this um, um, picture. She has significant bilateral ptosis. She has frozen eyes and she's elderly. So if you see this, it has to be oculopharyngeal muscular dystrophy till proven otherwise after excluding neuromuscular junction problem. That's in contrast to the previous one. That's someone with unilateral ptosis, okay? And, um, uh, you know, frozen eyes. So that's that's more of neuromuscular junction uh, problem. Pattern number six, if you have prominent neck weakness, this is what we call it, head ptosis or head drop. So here is a long list. It can be muscle disease, the muscle that holds the head upright. It can be neuromuscular junction like myasthenia. It can be inclusion body my, my, you know, um, myopathy, uh, myotonic dystrophy. But do not forget, please, ALS. ALS is well known to cause that head ptosis. Furthermore, do not forget central problem, okay? Parkinson patient with dystonia, they can present like this. And Please do not forget, you know, mechanical, like, you know, enclosing spondylitis that they might come like, like that with no clear um, uh, weakness. Uh, that's an example of head ptosis or head drop. Number seven, if you have bulbar and tongue and all these things. For me, please do not forget musk mycenia, anti-musk mycenia. That's treatable and usually in young um, women with recurrent respiratory failure. But Oculopharyngeal muscular dystrophy, um, um, myotonic dystrophy, inclusion body myopathy, ALS, these are, you know, um, other differential diagnoses that can cause, you know, pure uh, bulbar or diaphragm weakness. Please do not forget in our area, if you have isolated respiratory failure, do not forget to exclude Pompe disease, okay? That's a very, um, 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 you know, peculiar about Pompe that can cause respiratory failure doing, you know, force vital capacity, so buying and sitting and see if there is a drop in the in the force vital capacity, more than 10%, that will be diagnostic for diaphragm, you know, involvement in Pompe disease. Next one, if you have episodic pain and weakness and dark urine, that's myoglobinuria or rhabdomyolysis, uh, it can be one of the storage diseases, okay, either glycogen or lipid storage disease, or it can be related to toxins, trauma, especially if it's not related to exercise. Do not forget, please, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, especially in those patients and a lot of uh, neuroleptic uh, medication. Number nine, episodic weakness with delay or unrelated to the exercise. That's my senior till proven otherwise. However, periodic paralysis, all, you know, either sodium or um, um, calcium uh, channelopathy can cause that. In this condition, if you have someone with episodic weakness, delayed or unrelated to the exercise, please check their thyroid because secondary periodic paralysis related to thyroid exposes is a treatable thing that need to be um, uh, secluded. Now, if I have stiffness only with decreased ability to relax, that's myotonia, okay? If it is Improve with exercise, that's what we call it chloride channelopathy, like myotonia uh, congenita. It's getting worse with exercise, that's what we call it paramyotonia or sodium channelopathy. If it is associated with weakness, there is clear weakness, think about dystrophy, myotonic dystrophy, and um, you know, in, in, in older ages or, or advanced um, cases of thicker disease or um, the chloride channelopathy, they might have that, you know. Uh, weakness with the um, rigidity. Now, after seeing this, the three, six, and ten, you know, questions or pattern, now how do I navigate when I see patients with muscle disease? Of course, you'll start by taking history and evaluating the patient, but you might go directly to a specific test. If you see bilateral facial winging of the scapula and, you know, asymmetrical weakness, that facial scapulomuscular dystrophy, you might go for that specific test. Or, you know, you might need EMG and CK, muscle biopsy, then, you know, genetic testing. But we move from, you know, um, you know, from one area to other using, you know, the electrodiagnostic versus pathology versus genetics versus specific test based on the pattern that we, um, we will see. So if you have someone with a positive family history, 
boldness, you know, temporal atrophy, and flat, you know, um, a smile with history of cataract. There is some distal weakness. That's that's myotonic dystrophy. All what you need to do is do the repeat expansion for um, um, myotonic dystrophy, and you'll find that they can also. You don't need to do muscle biopsy. You don't need to do the CK and um, the other thing. Now. There are a lot of investigation that can be done when you have muscle disease. However, the most important thing is extension of your physical exam by doing nerve conduction study and EMG to exclude, you know, uh, neuromuscular junction problem, um, uh, spinal muscular atrophy, for example, neuropathy, and all these things. Uh, do the CK that will help you if you have sky high CK that limit your differential diagnosis. In most of those storage diseases, you don't see that. While in, in membranopathy, like dystrophinopathy or dysphenopathy, or those in the, in, the, in, the, in the muscle membrane, the CK will be, will be um, uh, elevated. Then you move to the appropriate you know, muscle imaging and you know, the appropriate uh, genetic testing. Now, few you know, uh, clue. If you have fixed weakness, um, uh, fixed weakness, look for the pattern that we talked about it, to be able to navigate. If you have episodic weakness, try to find the trigger that might help you to reach you know, the diagnosis. Uh, if you have myotonia, look if there is weakness or no weakness and then take it from there. Um, uh, if you have just symptoms of muscle ache, pain, and all these things in young women, that's almost always fibromyalgia rather than primarily, you know, muscle um, disease, which is um, um, uh, a common condition, skin biopsy and um, QSART, you know, test and other um, tests for uh, small fiber neuropathy will help you to reach the diagnosis. Now, I'll take a few, few examples here. This is 17 years old, facial weakness, difficulty, you know, raising his arm over his head with foot drop. If you see this appearance, what we call it pie appearance, you see the deltoid is a little bit spared. That's facial scapular muscular dystrophy till growth and otherwise. If you see this pattern, um, that's what we call it, you know, grave myotonia, very classical. Look, if there is a weakness or no weakness, look for the pattern of inheritance, then ask for the appropriate um, um, uh, test. Um, that can be, you know, uh, as I said, um, uh, grip myotonia, or it can be, you know, um, uh, percussion um, uh, myotonia. Uh, there is no difference between the two. So that's, that's, that's an example of, of that. This is a patient with nuclear weakness, um, um, but a lot of contractures. And remember, cardiac involvement, especially arrhythmia. Um, and he has, you know, maternal male cousin with the same condition. That's Emery Dreyfus, still proven otherwise. Our patient, elderly, ptosis, fixed, you know, um, uh, eyes um, with some bulbar weakness. That's, you know, oculopharyngeal muscular dystrophy, still proven otherwise, after excluding neuromuscular junction. If you see this appearance, you know, baldness, temporal, you know, atrophy, you know, that flat smile and history of cataract, diabetes, distal hands weakness and proximal um, uh, leg weakness, that's myotonic dystrophy type 1. In our area here, if you have bilateral winging of the scapula and autosomal recessive, these are um, uh, two patients uh, or two brothers uh, that I have been following. That's, you know, um, limb muscular dystrophy type 2A, which is uh, calpinopathy, which is one of the common, you know, limb muscular dystrophy also in our area. If you have someone who is unable to walk in his toes, distal weakness with the CK is high, usually more than 5,000, um, that's dysphenopathy, myoshi in our area. If you see this rash, that's classical, you know, dermatomyositis. You see, you know, the, um, the uh, rash over the chest, you see the gutter nodules, you see the run around the eyes, so that's very um, classical uh, for dermatomyositis. Please make sure that you exclude malignancy. If you see this pattern, flexors and quadriceps, we talked about it before, that's inclusion by the myositis. Remember, there are conditions that might, you know, confuse you with myopathy, like Guillain-Barre syndrome, acutely. So nerve conduction study will help you to find out. Myasthenia, we talked about it. And, you know, SMA, that's, that's important. Those are the important differential, in my opinion, to um, look at when you are dealing with the muscle disease. 
Um, just for the uh, next minute or two, some recent you know, advances in diagnosis of different form of myopathy. Um, there is some genetic susceptibility now that we know in those who um, uh, use statin and they develop statin-related myopathy. And uh, in the future, I'm sure that you know um, uh, we will have you know some sort of genetic things or that can you know predict those who develop you know the muscle toxicity. One difficult thing in the clinic is how can I differentiate between a chronic form and you know ongoing you know myopathy, inflammatory myopathy. There is some advancement there, like you know discovery of um, type one interferon and myeloid cell signatures that hopefully one day will help us to differentiate between chronic injury from active disease. PET scan now and uh, whole body CT is um, shown to be as good as the conventional screening of other malignancy, especially in, in myositis and dermatomyositis. myositis. So make sure when you are faced with any of those, do PET scan, make sure that you exclude you know, uh, malignancy. What are the take home messages? wide variety of condition can present with proximal weakness, I would say. Um, uh, evaluation of the primary care should be aimed to uncover the common and easily treatable thing, like drug, thyroid, you know, vitamin D related. So that's, that's your aim, to find out treatable thing. Um, CK and EMG, I think in my opinion, these are the most important investigation that we use to guide us uh, to reach the specific myopathy. When you suspect, you know, uh, inflammatory or paraplastic or infectious or hereditary myopathy, please refer to the appropriate surface, which is, you know, neuromuscular or specialized center to be able to manage those patients. If you have someone with pharyngeal and respiratory involvement, these are patients that needs urgent admission and finding out exactly what is the underlying um, etiologist. By this, I will stop here and thank you again uh, for um, listening. I hope that I give you, you know, some, you know, uh, overview of the muscle disease. It's very difficult to be covered, but um, uh, thank you so much. And uh, I hope to um, uh, meet you uh, soon. Shakran, uh, Dr. Ali, very illustrative talk. Uh, simply, uh, Always, when I see the central neurologist, central guy, non peripheral, they always say, I read this before my exam and then I try to wash my hair because it's so complicated. But you made it very easy for us. So, take home message here if you have progressive disease, then think about dystrophinopathy. If you have stable course, think about congenital myopathies. If you have a relapsing remitting, then think about channelopathies and others. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali. It was very illustrative.